Psychiatric institutions, more commonly known as insane asylums, are places where care is given to people who have mental problems. The first asylum against physical abuse as treatment was opened in the 1790s by William Tuke. Everything started out well, but then no one saw a point in wasting their money on these people, so things went downhill. Crazy people were known as lunatics at this point, with the stem luna, meaning moon. It was thought that putting a baby to sleep under a full moon or being born under a full moon caused insanity. Mania and melancholy were the two types of insanity that lunatics were sorted into. In colonial times, the only medical treatments were cathartic, meaning psychological relief through strong emotions. These procedures included ice baths that lasted until the patient lost consciousness. shocking the patient's brain. <music> Induced vomiting. And the notorious bleeding practice, where the bad blood of a patient was drained. Around 1800, physician Philippe Pinel unchained mental patients in Paris asylums declaring that they were sick and not criminals. This started the idea of moral management or creating a more domestic feel during treatment. The rooms were made comfier and homier, replacing shackles and chains with beds and cozy rooms. The study of the shape of the brain, known as phrenology, began to be used as a way to explain mental illness. Animal magnetism, focusing on the benefits of hypnosis and relaxation, began to be used as treatment too. Before 1844 in the United States, unseen people were kept in prisons and basements. Then Dorothy Dix came along and worked to reform the treatment of the mentally ill. Even after all the steps taken by Dorothy Dix after the Civil War, treatment went back to its old ways due to the overcrowding of veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. Shortly after the Civil War, Thomas Kirkbride invented the Kirkbride Plan, which was an architectural style for mental institutions that allowed for comfort and privacy of the patients. These tended to look gothic style and most, if not all, were closed down by the year 2000. Soon enough, moral management came back into play. Activities such as farms, greenhouses, dancing, picnics, boating, and church gradually became common community activities. Asylums soon became places for hobos, tramps, and homeless people to go during times of bad weather for food and shelter. Elderly people were also put there by their families who did not want to or could not afford to take care of them. This caused major overcrowding and brought back old, cruel forms of treatment again. In the early 1930s, lobotomy was introduced into American medical procedures. Lobotomy is the process of surgically separating the neural passages in the front of the brain from those in the back. Walter J. Freeman developed transorbital lobotomy, which could be performed quickly and required limited aftercare for the patient. Step 1. To induce sedation, inflict two quick shocks to the head. Step 2. Roll back one of the patient's eyelids. Step 3. Insert a device, two-thirds the size of a pencil, through the upper eyelid into the patient's head. Step 4. By the markings indicating depth, tap the device with a hammer into the patient's head or frontal lobe. Step 5. After reaching the set depth, move the device back and forth in a swiping motion within the patient's head. This procedure was referred to as psychic mercy killing and euthanasia of the mind. From 1960 to 1986, the number of patients in these psychiatric institutions made a major decline. The number of patients in psychiatric institutions in the U.S. went from over 500,000 to 100,000. These institutions played an important role in the medical history of one of America's minorities. Today, government plays a major role in the treatment of the mentally ill. 
It is now a law that all workers at mental institutions must be paid, therefore many activities have been cut. But now these institutions are much healthier and safer for both the patients and the faculty. Asylums are now humane and filled with proper care for those in need of it.